guys, welcome back to the channel. Last week's reptile video, I took you on a tour of all the species here in the reptile room, but I told you that it was by no means all the species here because so many of them are brew mating. So today in this video, we're gonna check on those brew mating animals and I'm gonna just quickly show you each of those species as well. There's some really weird and wonderful stuff in there. They are brew mating, they basically get very little care except they get a weekly check and a weekly fresh water change because as it does get mild, they do, some of them, move around enough to rehydrate. So we'll go and have a look. I'm gonna show you them as they are and change their waters afterwards so we're not fanning about with them too long because at the end of the day, we disturb them, we, we encourage them to use energy, which they shouldn't be using, or at least the least energy they use while they're brimating, of course, the better their body mass will stay. Enjoy this video, something different, and I'm kind of getting a little bit eager for the next month or two to pass, and we're gonna wake those animals up, and very soon after that, for some of them, this year's 2023 breeding season will begin. Enjoy the rest of this video. So in no order whatsoever. Let's have a look here. European ladder snake, very iconic Spanish species. And you can see with this one, definitely losing a little bit of, of body weight. So can't leave her brumating too much longer. Always best to keep an eye on this body mass. It's only nature, but in nature, things don't survive brumation. It's our job to make sure they do. A ladder snake. Green phase, another female of the same species. European ladder snake, much better body mass there. Somewhere dark and flattish to hide under. Koya. Fresh water and not bone dry. You don't want your animals desiccating either those long months of inactivity. Not wet, don't want scale rot either, but a little bit of humidity in there. Three in one, Pueblan, Californian, and Variable King, Trywood. Looking okay. Very sturdy. That's what you want to see. Very sturdy indeed. My breeding female Pueblum apricot milk snake. What a gorgeous animal. Excuse the background noise. Jackie's entertaining Lily. So you can see here, a bit of activity early on when the weather was probably a little bit warmer. So when you are setting your reptiles up for brumation, you must follow a sensible procedure. You want the animals very well fed, good heavy body weights and you want their guts empty. You must cycle them for brumation to make sure they're not brumating with a tummy full of food that's potentially gonna rot inside them. Brooks King snake. Good body weight. Beautiful. Brooks King. Beautiful. Male Pueblo. 
either half of the breeding pair. Good body weight again. And between them, they actually produce a really nice variety of coloured animals. Slightly larger. Uh oh, Lily's not happy. Oh, the sound of a crying baby. Yuckety yuck. Breeding pair of bull snakes. Not enough of these in the UK, but we have been changing that over the last two or three years. Absolutely stunning. This guy, seven and a half feet long. She's obviously a little bit smaller. There's a lid on this one. It must be tiny. Homebred grass snakes, ready to stock the outdoor enclosures we're building this winter. Sleeping beauties. Grass snakes. Again, hopefully, on view to the public this spring and summer. If I get my building head on, pretty sharpish. Very underrated. Very few people in the UK keeping these. <laughs> oh, it's like a playground here, it really is. European four line snakes, I think. Big enough to breed this year. Let's hope so. We'll resume the video when kindergarten is over. Have a look. This is the other half of the pair. And again, I think these guys are big enough to breed this year. We'll see what happens. But four line snakes, the sort of thing, if you're herping Corfu, somewhere like that, you're gonna find these in the wild. One of the heaviest bodies, bodied European snakes for sure. And you know what? The most pettable, lovable snakes. Changing from a stunning juvenile pattern, absolutely stunning. Gradually changing the mottles, losing these mottles and developing the four lines down their body. I can't tell you how much of a wonderful species this is to actually work with. What is it? Well, you might say just a corn snake, but a wonderful snake indeed. I just keep one pair of corn snakes, produce a few, just a few every year. And to be honest, they pretty much all go to friends uh, really to friends, kids are really passionate about their first snake. Corn snakes, brilliant species to keep, bless you. Brilliant species to keep, still up there as the top pet snake probably. Colour morphs, yes. For me, a pure, brightly coloured, wild phase, wild colour, wild type, however you want to call it, corn snakes then that's something as special, especially special, because for me, you can keep your colour morphs really, and just give me a standard, good example of a wild type snake, any day of the week. Here's his girlfriend, another colour morph of a corn snake. And again, a little bit like that. Grey phase, ladder snake, not too thin, but definitely a little bit on the lean side, one to keep an eye on through the next month before we wake them up and the feeding begins. Something very different here. We've got 
juvenile great crested newts bred here by myself and they're from snell lions which have been in captivity pre the 1982 wildlife and countryside act generation upon generation and also in here we have a couple of alpine newts this is why you're checking your brumating reptiles and amphibians i found a dead one in here this is what you're trading off you're trying to get an animal that is well fed plenty of body mass to survive literally months with no food they're not hibernating in the true sense of the word herp tiles brumating you've just slowed them right down certainly not at the right operating temperature to eat and digest food and still ticking over burning calories very slowly able to move and be present and coherent very different from a hibernating mammal such as say a dormouse or a hedgehog which has switched its body almost off possibly these are going to be woken up early now artificially i don't want to lose any more of these juvenile crested newts wake them up gradually warm them up to operating temperature and then start really feeding them up a little bit earlier than maybe they would in the wild here in the uk something different again european eyed lizard americanized as jewel lacerted but to me they'll always be eyed lizards because of their beautiful eye spots down their side oscillated lizards if you want to look at these look at the body mass on these and the thickness at the base of their tail so this is what you really want to see well into the brumation period good solid animals let's pop this back on there good solid animals and they've got at least six more weeks of brumation ahead of them because these are also destined to be outside this summer full uv proper sunshine outdoor enclosures this is our pair of mediterranean tortoises again spend most of their life outdoors until the winter comes and they're cycled for their long winter's rest not long now guys okay something very different european glass lizards or european legless lizards shelter pusic you call them what you want to call them five wonderful wild taken glass lizards all of them in the worldwide trade are wild taken from Europe and in this day and age I find that really sad these only came to me because they were handed in as a job lot of about a dozen animals to a reptile rescue centre in the UK as unfit for retail sale by an importer that's quite sad in itself isn't it covered in wounds and sores and scabs dehydrated starving hungry they spent the summer with me fattening up rehydrating shedding their skins getting rid of all those wounds and sores and now incredibly healthy an animal that wants a roasting hot summer but again these are going outside this summer in semi-glazed enclosures to keep the heat in and this is the plan the tiny few people that have bred these in captivity have worked out the reason why they've been so hard they don't just need to brumate like many reptiles to to breed to trigger their breeding in the spring they need to be down to five celsius not 10 and 12 celsius that many snakes and things are brumated at they've got to be cold these are at the bottom of the hibernation racks with almost no heating at all at any time so they've certainly had some blistering cold but as you can see 
thriving. I can't wait to get those guys outside for people to see in big eight foot, B eight foot enclosures. Hopefully with the eyed lizards, possibly with the Mediterranean tortoises. As long as they don't try and take the tails off my lizards because shelter pusics, they're greedy things that eat anything. These are the most special snakes in the whole of my collection. These are European smooth snakes, Coronella. Captive bred in Europe. Very, very, very few people working with these snakes. Hopefully they'll breed next year. They were remating in their enclosure, which is kind of in a barn, if you like, open to the elements. But when it got to minus seven, I bottled it and brought them in here where it won't go below minus five, probably, or rather, plus five, rather. Probably no need to worry whatsoever, but I did sort of bottle it. We'll see more of these in the summer in a new outdoor enclosure. But European smooth snakes, not big, not the prettiest colorful snakes, Britain's rarest reptile. Something very special for conservation and education indeed. So if you go on my website, King Snake Colubrids, and you read through there, it will say, animals all kept off sight. And these are in a friend's garage, unheated garage, because I don't want all my eggs in one basket. There are thieves around in the train and the hobby. So my rack system is kept off site. My smaller colubrids live and breed in these. These are big racks, these are homemade. These are actually Ikea tubs converted and they are really, really good for the floor space. For the smaller colubrids, the small king snakes, like the milk snakes and things, those four line snakes and the bull snakes and so on and so forth, no, they don't live in here. But these make a brilliant, a brilliant rack system. I don't know if I can show you. You'll see the thermostats. Don't fall out, guys. This will be embarrassing. I have big, big heat mats. You can see the probe there on the back of these racks. So the animals can go against the back wall to heat up. Good 30 degrees centigrade during the slow sort of the season. They can move forward to cool down window that allows daylight but that's usually darkened off through the winter hibernation period and brumation period they get a photo period and the room as you can see is illuminated as well so brilliant homemade rack system for the small milk snake sized colubrids but a really working brumation rack because i can set those temperatures so at the back it's given off enough heat to stop anything in here going below five or eight degrees celsius the only thing I can't control is those mild warm spells. So even in the deepest winter, we've had up to 13 degrees Celsius in here. How can you get around that? You can adapt a refrigerator for certainly for your smaller animals and keep them at an exact set temperature if that suits you better where you live or in these amazing wet, wet, mild winters that the UK generally has now. Mm -hmm.